the next talk is by uh, the runner-ups of the Handheld Devices Challenge. Um, and it will be given by Xudong Chang. Uh, yeah, please feel free to start. Okay. Hey guys, um, we are from uh, OPPO Research Institute and our localization uh, name, our localization method is called RLOX, stands for Retrieval and Localization with the Observation Constraints. And it's, a, it's an honor for us to represent our vision localization method for everyone. Uh, first, let me go through the total pipeline. Different from the last time in the CVPR, uh, this time we have modified three parts that the first one is the retrieval part. We have a more powerful and a more uh, stable image retrieval CNN to help us to get the global descriptors of every image. And uh, we also utilized a uh, more powerful and even more sufficient, e efficient uh, semantic segmentation network that's called BISNET. And we did some modifications to help us to get a better result. And uh, the third part is that we change from the 2D and 2D matches during the visual localization to the 2D and 3D visual localization. And uh, this method is called observation constraints. Uh, first, let me go through the image retrieval part. Uh, in ordinarily, uh, the image retrieval, uh, in the image, image retrieval strategy is that we use a CNN that help us to get uh, the, uh, the global descriptors of every image. And uh, with the uh, one dimension times d dimension, dimension uh, global descriptors, we use a uh, k nearest neighbor search to get uh, the top k candidates that uh, that uh, the, are most uh, similar to the query image. And uh, we use the spatial verification, which is also called the rank, to help us to use the lo local features to get uh, more better accurate uh, top k candidates. And with the help of image retrieval, uh, we will release some pressure in the visual localization part on the afterwards. And in this in this challenge, we use a more uh, a more larger and a more a powerful uh, network that is designed uh, by ourselves. And uh, we also did some reference into the the other papers. And uh, the, in this network, we back, uh, the backbone of our network is the ResNet one one. And uh, uh, we replaced uh, the uh, polling layers by the GEM polling uh, instead of the max polling or min polling. Uh, and uh, this polling layer helped us to get uh, a better discriminative uh, feature maps in the, uh, in the inference stage. And uh, we also, also used the margin, one of the margin based laws that are called arc based laws to help us to train and tame the, the CNN. And uh, after using these all three uh, modifications, we are able to get a silver medal in the cargo landmark retrieval challenge, which is also included in, in ECCV. And uh, so we, we, are much, uh, we have some uh, confidence in our network and we use this network to help us to retrieve, retrieve the uh, images of the Arkham data set. And uh, uh, through these uh, images, we can find that our network outperform NetVLAT and uh, DELF. Um, and then let's go through the semantic segmentation CNN. Um, in this task, we use uh, the BASNet. And uh, uh, on the original paper, uh, the, uh, the analyst has shown that uh, this network outperform some of the SOTA network in, on the data set of Cityscape. And we also uh, did some modification in this network. Uh, the first is that we add the ASSP uh, for stand for uh, as a spatial pyramid polling uh, layer for uh, get uh, for getting a larger receptive area, and we replace the bilinear interpolation on the uh, by, by by depth to space uh, layer to help us to get a sharpened edge of the semantic label mask. And uh, we did some uh, relation study that uh, prove our modification is functional and uh, useful. 
uh, this time we uh, our mapping stage did not change greatly. We also used the uh, uh, ground truth of the image extrinsics uh, that provided in that condition set. And we use this uh, image extrinsics to help us to uh, triangulate the 3D points. And we use these hints to help us filter these 3D points. And we add uh, the semantic labels to every 3D points during the mapping stage. And uh, let's go to the third part. Uh, the third part is called uh, observation constraints. Uh, this idea is inspired by the visibility graph or, and uh, the semantic match uh, consistency in these two papers. Um, in this part, we use uh, 3D, 2D and 3D matches instead of 2D and 2D matches. Uh, during the matching and the localization uh, procedure, we use uh, these constraints that help us to filter some unwanted 3D points. Uh, the first is the visibility distance, uh, which is meant to filter some points that uh, lay uh, far away from the initial pose. And uh, we use the visibility angle and the visibility, a uh, visible mean direction that uh, can be illustrated in this, uh, in this image. Uh, during the mapping stage, the, the 3D points and the cameras can form a cone area. And the angle of the cone area and the uh, mean direction can be shown in these pictures. With the help of these uh, two para parameters, we are able to filter some unwanted 3D points that lay out of the cone area. And uh, with the help of the constraints, uh, some unwanted 3D points uh, will, won't, won't harm our uh, localization results. And some and uh, semantic segmentation labels also help us to do the filtering. And the last part, reprojection distance is also used during the, uh, it, it is a small uh, trick that help us to do the matchings. And then this trick will be uh, introduced in the following slides. And with help of this idea, we are able to uh, do, do the localization part uh, iteratively. Uh, this idea is also uh, inspired by uh, Professor Settler's paper. And uh, we use this procedure uh, to get the localizing result uh, closer, to the, uh, closer to the ground truth, uh, loop by loop. And uh, uh, there's another thing to say that uh, in the in-lock data set, uh, the, it is different from the Arkham data set because uh, the, during the mapping stage, in-lock data set do not, uh, do not enable us to get the uh, mean angle and uh, the mean direction of every point. But uh, the semantic label and the reprojection distance constraints also can be used. And in this picture, we can show the, the trick of the reprojection distance constraint. Uh, with the help of the initial post that uh, it's the, during the image retrieval part or the 2D and 2D matching part, uh, we, are, we are going to get uh, a coarse localization result. And with the help of the, this post, we are able to reproject the 3D points to, uh, into the image plane. And uh, we, do, we use the 50 pixels distance to help us filter that those points that lay uh, they lay, lay out of the 15 pixels range. So with the help of the fine tuning uh, of the matching stage, we are able to get a better result in the in-lock data set. Finally, uh, our method can, can be concluded in three main parts. The first is the image retrieval. Uh, we have a better image retrieval CNN and we use a more sufficient, efficient and powerful uh, semantic segmentation CNN. And we change the localization pipeline uh, from the 2D and 2D and 2D matches to the 2D and 3D matches. And uh, we are, uh, there are also some limitations in our method. Uh, uh, the first, first is the efficiency of the localization algorithm because we use the iteration uh, in the uh, observation constraints. So the, uh, the time take for, for visual localization is very, very long. And uh, we lack, we, the, the, the method used in the 3D uh, points reproject, reprojection is not smart enough because we go through every 3D points in the point cloud. It is not uh, efficient and we are going to design a, a smarter 
uh, method that help us to arrange the 3D points during the uh, 2D and 3D matches. And uh, there is also some perspective uh, problems, uh, like to say, uh, like uh, illustrated in this image, some unwanted uh, 3D points that uh, cr across the world or across the uh, table are not uh, are not meant to be used during the localization uh, localization and matching. So uh, we, we by the use of uh, by the use of observation constraints, uh, we are able to filter some of these wrong 3D points, but not everyone is uh, filtered. So we are going to design a new, better uh, strategy to help us do the do the work. And uh, we also are going to uh, do some work about the local features because this time we also use the simple point and the RGD2 super, uh, local features to help us do the matchings and the local localizations. That's all. Thanks. Thank you very much. You are welcome to give us some advice. Thanks. Thank you very much for the great talk. We have time for a few questions. So if there is any, are any questions from the audience, please feel free to, to use the Q&A uh, box. If any of the panelists has questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. Um, I have a quick one maybe to start off. You said that uh, efficiency of the localization pipeline is currently one, one issue. What's the most time consuming step and do you have ideas on how to make things more efficient? Okay, uh, we think that uh, one of the most uh, most uh, uh, important thing to do is that the three D points arrangement, because we, uh, like I said uh, in the in the talk, the three D points uh, uh, go through every three D points in the point cloud is not uh, smart, and uh, dur during the loop stage, uh, we do the reprojection task uh, loop by loop. So this time we said a lot in the 3D points arrangement. So um, we are going to use some, some strategy that called Octomap that uh, help us to do the job and, and to filter some uh, far away from point, uh, some, some points that far away from the localization uh, post that uh, won't be used in the, during the matching stage. Uh, this is uh, one of the part. And uh, we're also going to modify the image retrieval uh, CN because uh, we use about uh, 10, uh, 100 milli milliseconds, that's uh, 0 0.1 uh, seconds during the image retrieval uh, part. So we are going to make the CN smaller and uh, uh, do some tricks that help us to make the inference stage faster. Yes. That's, uh, that's what I thought in to this question. Thanks. Great, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Please ask now. Um, uh, one question that I still have is that you're currently using separate CNNs for retrieval and semantic segmentation. Did you experiment okay. with uh, having a single one that does both tasks? Oh, okay, um, uh, we are going. We 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 did some study that merging this uh, two CN into one CN, uh, but uh, we think uh, the image retrieval uh, is the the, the CN in, used in this image retrieval task is uh, quite large, and uh, the the bisnet we use in the semantic segmentation is uh, really small. Uh, so we first uh, thing to do is that we should. Uh, make these two CNN uh, on the, the same level. And uh, next, we may uh, merge these two CNN into one CNN. Thanks. OK, great. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you very much again for, for giving the talk um, okay. and answering all the questions. Thank you very much.